I think I was wrong about glutamine. And honestly, I deleted a video because of it. Like, I, I just don't feel like that should be out there. That video didn't see a whole lot of views anyway, so it's not the end of the world. But I had really bashed glutamine because I would see in the fitness community it being marketed as like a muscle building amino. And it's a non-essential amino acid. Your body creates it. But then when I started understanding from a gut health perspective, from a GABAergic perspective, from an immunological perspective, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's something we're missing here on glutamine. So I had to change my stance. And I'm going to talk about why I think glutamine is making a huge comeback. There might be some places we need to exercise some caution, but we need to understand exactly how it's working. Okay, so with glutamine, it is what is called a conditional amino acid or a conditionally essential amino acid, which means that it is not essential in the sense that your body can make it, but it can conditionally become essential. So the moment that you are depleted or overtrained or extra stressed or sick or burned or have an injury, then it becomes more essential. So it's quite fascinating. So let's talk about what this can do because it's something that you should probably have on hand in your pantry. I've been drinking Element for seven years, not just as a traditional electrolyte, but as something that curbs my appetite through the course of the day. So that link down below gets you a free sample variety pack. When you get any purchase with Element, you get that free variety pack. So you can try all the different flavors. They've got a sparkling as well, which is something that's really been a game changer for me because it feels like I'm drinking a soda, but without the sugar, without the carbs, without the nonsense, without the hidden nasty stuff, just straight up electrolytes in a sparkling can. But I still love their stick packs. Their stick packs are what get me through a lot of my workouts. It makes life easier for me. I'm not thinking about food all the time because I have something that I can sip on that curbs my appetite and is also mineralizing my body. So that link down below, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas is for that free sample variety pack with any purchase. So the first thing we need to note, health and disease really do start in the gut. Okay, glutamine is a key, and I mean key, not just like, hey, it's kind of an energy source. It is a pivotal energy source for our intestinal cells, for our enterocytes. The cells within our gut literally use it as fuel, literally eat it. It becomes a carbon source, but more importantly, a nitrogen source for those cells. So they need nitrogen to be able to repair, to replenish, to be able to do what they need to do. Ultimately, what ends up happening after that is that nitrogen kind of aids in the conversion of glutamate, so creating glutamate in the cell. Now, what does this mean? Well, once you have glutamate, then it goes down this whole process. It's kind of complicated into the Krebs cycle with what's called alpha ketoglutarate. We don't need to go into a lot of detail there. The point is, it is important for that cell to have energy. For that cell to have fuel, to be able to replicate, to function, to repair, it needs glutamine. They are very unique. So when they become weakened or they don't get the glutamine for even a short amount of time, they break down. They degrade and it weakens your gut barrier, which can lead to serious inflammatory issues. Now, as a nitrogen donor to the cell, that is critical for DNA synthesis, for RNA synthesis, which is required for overall cellular repair. So when we talk about like the microbiome and health stuff there, we're playing in the universe, in a black hole of stuff that we just barely know a thing about. But when we see like the actual structural integrity of the gut, and we see how critical glutamine is for that, it makes a lot more sense. But let's dive deeper and let's look at a study that was published in the journal Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition that looks at the actual gut barrier science itself. In this particular study, they gave rodents a bowel obstruction. They caused an actual obstruction. And half of them they gave glutamine to and half of them did not. The ones that they gave glutamine to, the intestines recovered. In fact, they didn't even have damage to the mucosal layer because the cells were able to replicate and replenish and have their energy so quickly that they were actually able to sort of preserve their own integrity, preventing that gut damage. Now you might be thinking, I don't have a bowel obstruction. Okay, if you overtrain, if you go for a long endurance run, you have such a breakdown and such a stress and an injury in your body that glutamine is required for A, taking care of those injuries, but also one of the first places you start to deplete and break down is in your gut mucosal layer itself. So that means the demand for glutamine goes up. So you cannot create it fast enough in your body to replete that. So that's when it becomes a quote unquote conditional amino acid. The thing is, is that we are living in a state where we really do stress ourselves out a lot. 
And you've ever kind of heard that when you're stressed out, you're more immunocompromised. Let's talk about how glutamine impacts the immune system. This is where it gets really fascinating because most of us know from an immunological perspective that our gut is like our first line of defense for the immune system. Well, check this out. There was a study that was published in the Chinese Medicine and Science Journal. In this case, they took a look at subjects that were in the hospital for a surgery. So post-op, they gave them glutamine or a placebo. Those that had glutamine ended up recovering faster, got out of the hospital faster, and had higher levels of glutathione, meaning their body was sort of going through its detoxification process more smoothly. And we know this is interesting because glutamine is also an important precursor to glutathione. Glutamine and cysteine are very important for glutathione pathways within the body. Now, when you have an injury like surgery or even just catastrophic muscle breakdown from just workouts or you have a burn or an actual injury you're healing from, you require a lot of glutamine, a lot of it. So much to the point that your body will actually start to break down muscle for the glutamine. It's even been hypothesized that in the sake of like, really serious illnesses, that sometimes the muscle breakdown that occurs with these chronic or seriously terminal illnesses is actually an effort to get glutamine, right? Because we're so damaged and these cells are demanding it so much that it actually starts to break down muscle and we atrophy. That is a serious thing. That's not saying that we wanna give glutamine to feed some of these conditions, right? That's where we have to be careful. We want to add glutamine in when we're stressed. We want to add glutamine in when we're overtraining or when we have something that comes into our life that's really causing a lot more damage and stress or we have a serious wound. Glutamine plays a role there. The thing is, is it is an energy substrate for our immune cells in the same way that it is for our intestinal cells. So these immune cells need glutamine to fuel as well. So it's going to help regulate the T cell function so we don't overdo our own immune system. We don't step on the gas pedal too much and overreact with our immune system, but also helps T cell proliferation in the first place. There's a study that was published in Clinical and Experimental Immunology that found that glutamine actually increased lymphocyte proliferation. So it means that the immune cells were able to expand and proliferate on demand, not just like willy-nilly, when they were needed all the while having this T cell proliferation and regulation because overactive T cells and T helper cells can be problematic from an immune system perspective too. So what does this mean in a very simple way? It means that glutamine is fueling the immune cells so they have the energy to actually do what they need to do to replicate, to increase mTOR so there's actual cell repair and immune repair, all while also taking care of the gut so we can hopefully lower the inflammatory response in the first place. But one of the most interesting things that I have found about glutamine is its influence on GABA, the neurotransmitter that is known as the inhibitory neurotransmitter that helps us feel calm. Maybe you've taken a GABA supplement before. If you're familiar with sort of how the brain works and these neurotransmitters and inhibitory neurotransmitters, glutamate is the excitatory neurotransmitter. If you've heard of MSG before, that's concentrated glutamate in some ways. Lights your brain up. GABA is the inhibitory. It's the brakes, right? It calms the brain down. Glutamine is the precursor for both of these. But if we're deficient in glutamine, we don't create enough GABA. Because essentially, glutamine fuels glutamate first. And then the leftover glutamate can ultimately become GABA. In fact, there was a study published in FASEB Journal that found that supplementing with glutamine increased extracellular fluid GABA by 30% and striatal GABA by about 14%, two and a half hours after consumption. So essentially, you're increasing GABA levels just by taking in glutamine. So glutamine is going to be created in an astrocyte and a neuron, but it can also enter into an astrocyte and a neuron within the brain. Once that glutamine is in the astrocyte or the neuron, it is then broken down into glutamate which is then broken down even more into glutamate dehydroxylase, and that is how you are left with extra GABA, right? So then the GABA is broken off from the glutamate essentially, re-enters, and then as an inhibitory neurotransmitter, makes you feel calm. And any GABA that you don't use actually gets reconverted back into glutamine to repeat the cycle all over again. But think about it, if you don't have available glutamine, that whole cycle stops. So in very simple, simple terms is glutamine is required at the neuronal level, at the astrocyte level to create glutamate and create GABA. So if we can't create glutamate, we cannot create GABA because GABA in some ways is sloppy seconds in this case. So one of the most powerful ways that we can calm our brain is by making sure we have adequate amounts 
of glutamine in. And if you're more depleted and stressed, you can see how this could become risky. So what do I recommend you do in terms of amounts of glutamine? I think a five gram dose of glutamine is plenty. And I think a five gram dose as close to a stressful response as you possibly can. So if you go for a long run, have some glutamine. It's not going to spike your insulin like leucine. It won't rake a fast. Now, if you are chronically stressed, you may want to take five grams a day for a little while. And there's evidence that it can support your gut quite a bit, but I would also combine glutamine with bone broth or collagen or some of these other things that are great for the gut mucosal layer as well. So as always, keep it locked in here. I'll see you tomorrow.